My name is Simon Tickle, and I work for Christie's International Auction House in New York. I've been with them for 14 years now, partly in London and partly in New York and partly in Geneva. And I'm responsible for putting together some of the large international auctions that we hold. I deal with diamonds, with coloured stones, with jewellery. And we're a public barometer of the market. We are very much at the leading edge of where uh, where people are buying, what people are buying, whether it be a piece of jewellery for $1,000 or $5 million. I think the most exciting piece and the most extraordinary piece was the Agra Diamond that was a 32 carat pink diamond that we sold in London in 1990. It made a world record price at the time of $7.5 million. But it wasn't just the value, it was the fact that it was a gemstone steeped in history it was first recorded in the mid-16th century and was, the and, and was a diamond belonging to the first Mughal Emperor Babur. And it had everything. It had history, it had value, it had beauty, and without question is by far and away the most exciting thing to date. The success of an auction is very pressurised because to a certain extent our success is determined two days a year. You could say that we're a shop that's only open twice a year. And on that given day, the success of that sale will determine how successful we've been in that specific year. And obviously, we like to try and find the best possible pieces that the market has to offer. That takes us to anywhere and everywhere. And there are some wonderful experiences that's, that one has had. Um, and some rather traumatic experiences that one has had. Uh, one of the most exciting was a call that I got out of the blue, and it was a woman who had a 10-carat blue diamond. Now, very often we get a call for a 10-carat blue diamond, and it will be an aquamarine, it'll be a piece of glass, it'll be a sapphire, it'll be anything but, particularly from a cold call, because these are very specific objects that you know where they are, and you know in whose hands they're kept. This came out of the left field, and it transpired that this woman, who lived in the middle of nowhere in a very small cottage, had one of the most incredible blue diamonds that I have ever seen. And it transpired, it wasn't just one, she then said, oh, Mr. Teekle, let me show you my swimming pool, which was a 300 carat sapphire. She then sh said, let me show you my waterfall, which was a diamond corsage by Cartier made before the First World War in 1915 with a 25 carat pear shaped D flawless and other large white diamonds. It was the most magnificent collection of jewellery I, I have really handled. And she was very secretive about the collection, but it transpired that she had been uh, related to one of the great diamond pioneers in South Africa at the turn of the century. And it was a great insight into a different type of collector. This is somebody who didn't have her jewellery um, for glamorous purposes or it wasn't ostentatious in any way. It was a legacy of a very, very special person at quite an exciting time of the jewellery business because the opening up of South Africa as far as diamonds and gold were concerned was something very important to the jewellery industry as a whole. On the other hand, I think one of the most tragic um, things that I've been involved with was a woman who came in, she telephoned with an appointment that she had an emerald that she wanted to show me. And it was just that, and I went down and I said, it's a nice emerald, but it's a little bit pale, and it's a little bit included, and it's not an old stone. But we could probably get somewhere in the region of four to $5,000 for it. There was a look of disbelief at this person, and it had transpired that she had bought this stone. They were living in Africa. Their estate had been compulsorily purchased by the government. They had been paid in local currency, and they wanted to get out with all the money that they had, and they had paid almost $500,000 for this stone. And so whilst one has very exciting moments in one's career, you also get the tragedies, and I think this was something that was really terrible um, and will really remain with me forever, to see a family like that 
ruined by an opportunist, um, of which there are, I think, probably like any business. And when going into a business and when you go to buy, to sell, whether you go to work for somebody, integrity and the way in which you conduct your business will determine your success.